lot of the geodes I have are already pre-opened, meaning I found them this way. Are you ready? Hey everybody, and welcome back to Ellie Knows Rocks. Today, we're in my backyard. This is backyard edition of geodes. That's right, I have a ton of geodes that I have been collecting, you guys have seen the videos, and today we're gonna talk about the process of cutting them open and what you're looking for when you want to open a geode, plus some little things that you're just not sure about, but we're gonna dive into and see what's inside if we can figure it out or figure out how to open them. All the things, basically, is what we're going to be doing today. We're gonna to be using my tile saw. I'm also going to break that down into sections so that you guys can see how safe it is, how to use it, how to replace the blades. If you're curious about any of that, we're gonna make that quick so that you can skip around and do what you want to to get the most out of this video for you. I will be leaving pinpoint locations to where you can go out and find your own geodes if you're interested. If you guys are interested in purchasing any of the geodes that you see me cut open, please check out my Etsy channel. I try to post them on there as often as possible. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this adventure, and let's go see what we cut open. You guys know that I have a ton of geodes. These are just the guys that have been cracked open, that were already opened when I found them. They're beautiful, right? I also have buckets of them that need to be opened. So today, hopefully, we can open up quite a few of these geodes to see what's inside of them. In my giant toolbox that has only rocks in it, I have a drawer specifically for different types of the geodes that we found. These are kind of the ruddy ones, the ones that are like kind of really fragile, it seems like. We'll see what happens. We're gonna pick a couple to cut them open. These ones, they seem a little more competent, a little bit tougher looking, have kind of almost that thunder egg outside look where you can definitely see that there should be hollow on the inside just because of the little line that runs through them. This is crystallization that attached to the country rock where it had a softer area for some of that hydrothermal fluid to try to escape. So you get these lines that run across the geode in different directions. And that's just based on the sediment that the geodes are forming in and how strong of a bond the silica rich fluid was forming with that country rock. That's why you see lines like this running through geodes and thunder eggs as well. You get the lines on both of them. But some of these, boy, I'm really excited about this group here. This one's kind of interesting. It's flat. Hope there's something in there. We're gonna see if there's something in this guy for sure. Here we go. This one. I have been waiting months to cut this open. But it's definitely not gonna be the first one. We're gonna get our hands dirty a little bit first. And I'm hoping that my saw blade is not too dull. It has been used a couple times. I'm just hoping that we don't have to go to the store to get a new saw blade before we start into this. All right, for any of you that have been watching me for a while know that this is the tile saw that I use to cut open everything. A lot of people completely disagree with it, but I believe that it is the best machine for me. It works really well. The blades are easy to change. It was fairly inexpensive as far as like lapidary saws would go. And it's extremely reliable. No, this video isn't sponsored. I just like the rigid brand. It works really well for me. It's a 10 inch tile saw. I believe you can get them at Home Depot. It has a water pump, it has a water tray, it has a sliding table on it that does all of the things. Mine's a little bit worse for the wear right now because it needs to be cleaned up. But it works fast and it's super easy to use. I end up getting the blades from Harbor Freight because they're more affordable than going to Home Depot or Lowe's to get the blades. Also, for those of you that have seen my older videos, you know that I have an Apollo Gemini ring saw. It's a little bit worse for the wear only because the seal is broken on the inside, so it has a hard time pulling up water. It still works really well. I just need to either 
replace the sealer, figure out how to reseal it on my own. But this saw works great for smaller geodes, for stuff that's a little bit more sensitive, where the big saw could potentially kind of mess them up. Here are the geodes that we are going to cut open. We have bigger guys to little, little teeny, teeny, tiny ones, like smaller than my eye, that we are going to all cut open. The smaller ones are gonna be cut open on the ring saw. The bigger ones are gonna be cut open on the tile saw. I just have to decide which ones are fragile enough to be cut here. This guy, very lightweight. Um, there are a couple others on here that are like opening air. That's what it feels like. It feels kind of like you're lifting up air. Some of them are a little bit heavier than that, but I believe that cutting them open on the right saw is crucial to get the perfect cut and also to not lose as much material because when you put them on a saw, the width of the saw is how much material you're gonna use, lose. So if you're cutting through something like a little crystal or something like that, it's unfortunate that you lose that crystal. I just wanted to remind you guys that anytime you're using any kind of equipment, especially when you are cutting open geodes or you're using a saw or things that have electricity around them. Be aware of what's going on. Make sure that the edges of your extension cords are up high so that they're not going to sit in the water and you could possibly get electrocuted. Wear hearing protection. Hearing protection is extremely important. We only get one set of eardrums and once those little hairs in our ears start to die off, we don't get our hearing back. So hearing protection is extremely important. Another thing that's really important is your safety glasses. Yes, these are sunglasses, but they're also ANSI rated, so it means that they're shatterproof. So they're dual action sunglasses by Bomber, and I can use them while cutting things open, while I'm breaking rocks in the field, and also they protect my eyes because they are like UV protected, whatever, the, they're UV rated so that I am not going blind as well. All of this safety equipment is extremely important when you're using this kind of equipment, so please be aware of it. Don't have any loose clothing that could get caught in the saw. Don't put your fingers in pinch points. There are pinch points on each one of these saws and don't want to get your finger caught in any of those areas. Those are the things that you really, really need to be aware of and have before you get started is proper PPE. The ring saw cannot cut you. I am putting my fingers on the blade right now multiple of them you can see i'm pushing up against the blade it can't cut you it can cut your fingernail but my fingers are perfectly safe i'm gonna cut this one first all right here we go are we ready for this whoa Look at that. That's all kinds of craziness going on inside there. You've got layers and layers of chalcedony. Even some agate started on the edges on this one. You can see those bands. But basically it just, it formed like a, a worm's tube sort of a thing. It's, it's nuts. Okay, this one we're gonna cut open next. And I'm super excited about it because it is so lightweight. It is just, there's like, there's, there's no weight to it in comparison for its size anyways. So yes, the ring saw again, gosh, I don't know, maybe, ooh. This is where it's really hard to decide. But in general, what you're looking for is to have good exposure of any of the lines. And so, oh man. All right, maybe we'll just chance it and we're gonna cut long ways like this because then we should have good exposure of multiple lines. Are you ready? Wow. Wow, let's look at that in the light. For sure. Oh, look how cool that is. The reds, pinks, and purples on this side. Wow. And then the teeth along that side, and you can see they were growing right along this band here. 
So that's why it's kind of important not to cut directly through those bands sometimes is because those were those teeth followed is right along that band. So just kind of the geology of the geode basically. <gasps> wow, and same with this one. You've got this like crisscross of bands in here on this side and you've got all those amazing pretty crystalline teeth right up in there. So these two are super special. And then this one has a portion that's already opened and exposed. We are going to try to just shave that off a little, little bit to open that up on the inside. I'm using my finger to guide the blade because it's a very movable blade. So I'm just placing my finger on that edge just to keep it from wiggling too much. And since I'm trying to only slice off the tiniest little portion, I'm being very careful. Being able to hold your fingers up against a geode while you are pushing it through a saw can ensure that the geode doesn't crack due to the vibrations that are coming through the blade and going into the geode. That's the fine, tiny piece we got, but look what we got to expose. So cool, like that's got some really pretty pink, but look at that. Look at the inside, all that growth on there. Isn't that awesome? Like, super beautiful. We're gonna cut it long ways to try to expose as much of the good stuff as possible. All right, I gotta say that I'm loving this angle of the camera, but oh my gosh, it was such a pain to wrap my arms around the camera. I need a better stand for that. Anyways, I hold pressure against both sides of the geode so it wouldn't snap. Whoa, whoa. Oh my gosh. Very unexpected, actually. Look at that. If I didn't know better, I would say that uh, these couldn't possibly be the same half. But this is definitely an agate geode. We see the lines of agate and that deep black, blue, pink, purple color in there. And then this guy with all of those little crystals and some of that smoky in there as well. And you can see those agate bands. And you can see the teeth right here are from, because that line in the back where just a, a concentration of silicate fluid was there and really bonded well and started to form those bases that crystals could grow off of very quickly. Now I've got to say that these geodes, these are kind of my, I don't know what to do with them. They're almost an anomaly as so to speak for me because I don't know how to open them exactly. They are hollow on the inside and I've put water in there and it pours back out, of course. And then in this one, you can even see the inside, see those crystals in there. Now for me, the hardest part about deciding what to do with this is not knowing exactly how to open it. Clearly this part is not gonna be a geode. It's just solid, but it's that inner portion where should I just cut the front off? Ugh, it gets very, very confusing. So we're gonna figure that out and see if we can do a good job. Right, now what we're gonna do with this one is cut right about here, just along that edge, hoping to expose what's in there. With this one, I am allowing the blade to tell me when it's through the hard part of the geode, and I'm not pushing it any further than that. Look at those bands, that agate banding, woohoo! So hard though to see all those crystals in there, but they are amazing. Yikes! <laughs> Look how great that is. Holy crap. That is so cool. Guys, I never ever do this. We're gonna crack this open using tools. Mm, I know, I know. Don't mind the toothbrush. I really, I don't know what to do. I just, I'm going to fill up this geode with water just from a bucket and so that we can dump it out into another bucket and see how much water the geode actually holds. 
All right, this is pretty simple. We're just dunking a geode in the water, allowing the air bubbles to escape so that we can get the amount of volume of water that comes out of the geode, which kind of tells us how much space is in the geode to see if it's worth cutting open. So, that's all we got, like a half cup of water. So that's how much room is in this. That's what makes me think this part, definitely not a geode, it's just the top. We're gonna crack it open and fingers crossed. My camera had stopped recording, so I didn't get the first part of me smashing it against a rock. We're just, we're falling apart here. Okay, so we're gonna hit this and we're going to hit it so that all of the pressure goes that way or the energy goes that direction so that it hopefully won't break this part, but I don't know. Oh my gosh, oh, oh no. Oh, that's part of the inside, oh my gosh. Ah, this is working. Uh-oh. Oh no, that fell off. Oh, that was on the inside and it fell off. Darn it. That's okay, we're, we're at this point, we have to like keep going, but. Come on, sorry. Let me. Oh, that's so hard to do. Mm, this is why I cut everything open because this stresses me out. Look at those blues in there. Like you can see those crystals, the, the one hanging kind of from the top in there. And some of that stuff, it gets back in there. You can see those deeper blue crystals, but oh my goodness, look how neat that is. Like it's just beautiful. And I'm gonna clean it up so that all of these crystals on here don't have that yellow crud on them. We're gonna open these up. And just FYI, I don't recommend wearing gloves when using a saw. I am using these right now because I have a really bad cut on my knuckle and it's starting to hurt worse. I don't need it to get infected and I have some scrapes on this hand because I've been repainting my house and doing yard work and just destroying my hands the last week. So TMI, but there you go. So anyways, we're going to cut these three open. Double geode going on on this side. Lots of crystal. A big old mouth on it, or a heart. Oh my gosh, it could be a heart shaped. A little star pattern, isn't that awesome? And you can see these four points of the star lined up with different bands on the outside. And I'm gonna cut it, oh, I don't know. I'm gonna try and cut it this way and hopefully this domes out this direction so that you can see like a pretty bulb of crystals inside. Feel the hollow spots with the saw because the blade just kind of sinks right through them real quick. Like stepping into a mud puddle. There's no, there's no ground beneath you anymore. Look at that. Look at those. That agate banding right there, yeah. Some pink in this one, really awesome. Remember me talking about this little pancake looking guy? Well, we're gonna open this up first on the ring saw before we move over to the big saw. This is just a little thunder egg. Got some calcine in the middle, nothing spectacular at all. Now, and for those of you that aren't familiar with a tile saw, that noise is terrible. This opens up and, and you can see your blade. Now, as I turn the water pump on, water's gonna come out of here. And that's how the blade gets wet as the blade turns. So there's a little wobble in my, my blade. It's getting older, but it's you know perfectly fine. But it has two settings, high, low, 
I always, well, low seems to what, not be working. Nope, Never mind. Today we have one setting, which is going to be high. Anyways, if you want to take off the blade, you just undo this nut right here, and it actually has a tool that comes with it right on the back of the tile saw. Pinch points like I was talking about earlier. After we close that. So if you get your hand stuck up inside here for any reason, like, yeah, you, you're gonna pinch yourself real bad. You're not gonna cut yourself, but you can pinch yourself horribly. And if we go around here to this side, these are just the buttons. This turns the water pump on and off, and this turns the saw on. When the saw is turned on, it has a red laser, which allows you to just kind of see where you're gonna cut the rock. So if you look, you can see right where the laser is at is your accuracy point for where the blade is gonna be hitting the rock. This is not going to cut you, I promise. I've been using these for years. I still have all 10 digits, and the partial digit that's missing from my tiger biting it off has nothing to do with the saw. So I am about to cut open my most anticipated geode. I am the most excited to cut this one open, but I'm also terrified because I don't wanna mess it up. But that's the risk you take because I have to see what's inside of this. I'm hoping it's beautiful inside, but we'll find out. So we're gonna cut this open, but I'm not gonna show you till the end. Unless I get excited and then um, I'll show you guys sooner. But regardless, you'll see it one way or another. You just, you just might have to wait till the end or jump to the end like most of you do. Let's go see the goods. <sighs> okay, 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 okay. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet, so I'm just going to reveal it on camera. Okay. Um. Oh, whoa. Oh my gosh. Look at those agates. Look at those bands. Check that out. Look how beautiful those bands are. And like I've said before, you can count agate bands almost like tree rings to see the amount of events that it took to create those bands before the geode formed on the inside. Wow. That is, there's not much else to say. It's just gorgeous. Look at that shape. Awesome agate banding in there. And a great little crystal encrusted geode. You can even see that some of these outer bands have crystals that grew inside them. So they have almost a chevron crystal structure around the geode banding. Or the agate banding, excuse me. This next one proves that you never know what's going on with a geode. It felt pretty competent until I got halfway through the geode and the top of it just kind of fell apart, but it was really pretty nevertheless. And then, wow, this next one took quite some time to get through for how small it was. So I was kind of surprised to see what I saw. Not that I'm completely surprised by this one, but I am completely surprised. It is a thunder egg from the Dugway Geobeds. Look at those bands. Perfect, perfect agate banding. And maybe if I sliced off the back, it might even have something else going on. You never know. But this one in particular, see all those little brown dots in there? That, that's something that was just dissolved within the silica. And you can see the brown dots 
You can see the brown dots over here as well. Pretty unique. I'm not exactly sure what that would be caused from. I'm assuming iron, but you never know. The next batch of geodes, I'm just showing you their beautiful reveals. Look at that. Wow. Like that is one interesting nodule. Don't you agree just on the outside? But man, the inside with that like teardrop agate geode within that rhyolite banding, those are amazing. Some of the geodes that we had, I thought were really gonna fall apart when I cut them open. So I was super surprised that they stayed together. Look at that. Really, really classic botryoidal features inside. A lot of crystal growth on this side. Uh, you can see a few crystals over here. So what I'm assuming is this one was like this. Although crystals can form 360 degree uh, radius, it doesn't matter. But I'm assuming that since there's only half crystals in here, that the bottom half stayed really full with silica rich fluid before the water evaporated off and the dissolved silicate actually formed these crystals inside. And so it just stayed in this like half shell sort of an area. And that's why the top half doesn't have any crystals. It's just a theory though. I'm not exactly for sure. Those ones that was super, super fragile and unfortunately the top fell off, but it gave us a beautiful geode nonetheless. Look at that, that really dark black color in there is created from magnesium and a little bit of manganese. It has great crystal formation. This one actually had several influxes of some pretty strong hydrothermal fluid. And then it stayed in there for quite a bit to form all of the crystals that you see. All right, guys, I'm sorry, but we have to say goodbye for this video. It is really, really long at this point, and I could go on all day long, opening up geodes and telling you all about them. But if you've been checking out my short videos lately, you've realized that I have started the February Dugway Geobed Geodes for every day in February. Some of them you've already seen here today. Some of them you may have seen previously and gone, oh, they're here in the video. But I can't get to each and every one of them. This video ended up being like two hours long in the rough edit. So I'm not gonna force you guys to watch a video that's that long. <laughs> so all of the next stuff that we're gonna do, we're gonna talk about cleaning the geodes. We're gonna talk about if they fluoresce underneath UV light at night. And we're gonna talk about displaying geodes and what you can do with them to make them look beautiful after you've cut them on the next video. So that's gonna be a part two. So I hope you guys come back. Thank you so much for joining me on this adventure of Backyard Edition, Cutting Open Geodes. <laughs> but I hope you come back for the next one. Please, if you haven't already, subscribe, hit the like, notification button, do all of the things. It is the number one way to support your favorite creator or me, one, one or the other. Thank you guys so much again, and I'll see you on the next one.